Zombie Apocalypse. <laughs> Hello guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to all my new subscribers and my regular viewers appreciate you a lot here today's pipe is a nightmare piece it's a 10 inch overset with 445s on it a T and all in all it was a nightmare to make I started out making this pipe on autopilot I see the drawing and in my head I run through how to make it but along the way I realized that I weren't able to put a positional in this piece so midway through making this, I kind of changed in my head how I was going to go about making it. I started off making my set, I tack it all together on the table and then I stand it up so I can level it off. Making sure that the 45 is level, the sliver of pipe on the end is level and that the set is the right measurement. Which is why I use my big square and it's basically the same as measuring top to top which gives you the centre to centre mark. I like to do my piping stages so I like to tack all my prefab together and then move on to welding all the pieces at once. The pipe and fittings I'm using is Shed 20 and the minimum welding requirements is a class 2. I grind over my tacks rather than cut them out. In some cases I do cut them out but for the most part I just grind my tacks down and then weld over them. Here I'm moving on to my T. So I made that first piece and then here's the second piece which is the T and I'm gonna tag the 45 to it. In my head I thought I'd be able to do a positional last, joining this T piece and the 45 set that I just welded. At this point here I realized I wasn't able to do a positional joining this T and the 45 to the other 45 set. The only way you can put 45's level is to have it sidewards, meaning the set is flat, which is why I welded this in a weird order. Now it's tacked up, I'm raising it up to make sure I have the right measurement and the right set, using my speed square, making sure it's 45, and then making sure now the set is correct. But while I was tacking it, the pipe slipped out my hand and landed square on my level. Bruh. I was surprised it survived. I was expecting it to land on the bubble and crack it. But my level has been to hell and back. I've been using this one here for about two years and I'm definitely due an upgrade. All the 10 inch welds are rooted at 150 amps. It's a special synergic root setting that the Fronius has. So you don't adjust the volts and wire speed, you adjust the amps. And then the machine does everything else. And then the caps are all at 250 amps. And I'm using one mil solid fill wire. We used to use a copper coated wire, but the regulations in the UK are changing. So now it's not copper coated anymore. And for the gas, I think it's 12% um, CO2, 2% oxygen inside of it. I think it's the M24 gas mixture.
Because this piece is so big, I'm tacking it together on the floor, but you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Any positionals on these pieces here, you wouldn't be able to get the correct orientation of the 45. So in other words, instead of having a 45 that runs straight and true, you would end up having a, a rolling set and then the 45 wouldn't be straight anymore. And I could have avoided that by putting a flange on earlier, but then I would have been double handling and then leveling off a 45 with a flange on it, which is locking the orientation is a nightmare and I'd rather not do that. And here is where the pipe starts to get ridiculous. I'm six foot and this pipe's all the way up in the air. And because I haven't got a manipulator, I have to use my hand to turn the pipe. And all this weight makes it dangerous and hard to turn. It took a lot of effort making sure that the flange is added up to the correct measurement. There's a three mil tolerance with this job. So the flanges had to be the correct measurement apart from each other, as well as the correct measurement from the face of the flange to the end of the 45. So here I'm going over, checking the levels, putting it roughly in the correct spot and then checking the overall measurement just to make sure that it's the correct distance. The reason why I'm checking the measurement before tacking, because if you're lucky you'll be able to adjust the flange level ever so slightly and grab a few mil of distance if you're coming up too short or too long. And here I'm welding with my left hand. Sometimes you gotta do that so you're not in the way of the pipe. And I weld the flanges at 270 amps. Now I can put the final flange on and I've done this for two reasons. One, so I don't have to counterbalance the weight of the flange sticking this far out which would be a lot of counterbalance and also because I'm, I'm at the max height anyway so I wouldn't have been able to um, spin the pipe without it touching the floor. But I put the flange on and then I check the measurements both sides making sure it's equal and it saves me time so when I drop the flange down or pick it up in the air I can just put the level on it and as long as it's level to the other two flanges I can tack it knowing that it's got the overall measurement. Then finally it's a 15mm thread that needs to go on. I did it last just so I know that the piece is on level. By leaving it to the last minute there's a lot of pressure in case you make a mistake putting it on and then the whole piece is condemned. But it's finished and in conclusion this piece was a nightmare i was glad to be done with it at one point i wanted to turn my camera off and then just get the job finished because it was long but i'm happy with how it turned out the measurements were all bang on and the welds came out okay nothing to write home about but not bad as well so if you enjoyed what you saw please hit the subscribe button leave a like and check in next week for another video thanks for watching